Welcome to this meeting of Westminster Mayor and Common Council. The council meets here at City Hall on the second and fourth Mondays of every month. Please note the council meetings that are open to the public here at City Hall are also available and streamed live on the city's YouTube page, as well as the Community Media Center channel and website. Now we'll begin as we do every meeting with a pleasure of life, followed by a moment of the night. I pledge allegiance to the Republic of the United States of America, and to the Republic for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, you're going to see that everyone. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones or any other electronic devices that have a light, ring, or beep, or otherwise. Thank you. Copies of tonight's agenda and the entire information packet that the council will be using are available online on the city website. And for those present in the room, copies of the agenda are available to them. Uh, the we will begin now. Uh, next item, uh, before we move on, I just want to note two things about tonight's agenda. Uh, one is that we've added an item to the consent agenda. Um, and the other is that we have a uh, substitute version of the budget amendment. Uh, thanks to Mr. Haas, who did some addition, the distraction or something, we checked the math. And, so we, we've got a corrected version. Uh, without objection, uh, the agenda uh, is done. Thank you. All right, we'll move on now to uh, presentations. We'll go to Dr. Becker, uh, the mayor, to make some exciting presentations. Yes, I'm excited. Oh, no, it's um, well, thank you, the council president. Uh, Dr. Gallagher, would you like to when you want to read the introduction? Oh, yeah, come on, come, come on, Emma. Excuse me. I'm already sort of off script. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So the Celtic Panther is an annual 5K race held in downtown Westminster near St. Patrick's Day. The event was founded through the coordinated efforts of Dr. Patrick Gallagher and O'Gordon's Irish Pub. In partnership with the city of Westminster, this event has grown, attracting nearly 1,000 runners. In addition to a great crowd of runners, the race is enhanced with festival activities, including live entertainment, Irish and Celtic themed vendors, highly game demonstrations, children activities, and much more. Due to the growing success of this event, race proceeds can be donated to three local charities, which in turn supply the city with nearly 100 volunteers to assist with event logistics, children's crafts and games, and the 0 0.5. Okay, which the council is well familiar with. <laughs> All right. This evening, Access Carol, Target Community and Educational Services, and Crossroads Community Church are the three charities receiving donation checks. Here to assist tonight, it's almost like the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> um, it's race founder Dr. Patrick Gallagher. Would you like to say anything before we present the checks? Well, thank you, Mayor Dr. Becker and, and the council for and the uh, Chief Ledwell and the uh, city uh, streets and, and Abby and, and her group with all the continued support of the event. Um, it continues to grow with the support of the city and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to for people to have a, a good time in uh, March and uh, also to give some money to some wonderful local charitable organizations. So, but Abby, can we do this earlier? The world is alive. <laughs> The day after the county was a lot today. I'm going to say this year was better. Yes, it was. Last year was the 2022 was the six inches of snow. But the party people that came out enjoyed it and really had a good time. And if we, I mean, I'll speak for the council. Um, They can correct me if I miss this speak, but we all thoroughly enjoyed the 0.5. I mean, it is right about at our level uh -huh. of cardio, so uh -huh. it, it works incredibly well. Plus, the beer truck is still available, even if it's donuts. It, 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 donut. it, it right? is, yes. and yes. there are donuts happening, yes. yes. so you know, we always really appreciate the support. Yes, that because it can be grueling. <laughs> so, um, so let's start. I'd like to call uh, Access Carol. Please. Representing Access Carol this evening is Kristen Sorborn, Development and Compliance Specialist. Come on. Okay. And here you go. 
right? Here, mm -hmm. come in here. We're gonna take a picture. We're gonna face. Yeah, oh, you, can, yes, you can give your phone. Can I get my phone now? Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. One, okay. two, three. Thank you. Here, let me. Sorry. Oh, can I just send you these? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I know how to reach <laughs> all of you. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Access Girl is extremely grateful for um, any funds that our community uh, can help us raise so that we can help the less fortunate neighbors that we all have. Um, we're a, probably the only full time safety net organization here at Access Carol um, that helps with medical, behavioral, and dental health care. Um, so we try to do all the all the wraparound services, and you helped us for so long. Thank you so much, and oh, Abby, thank you for involving us in this. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to next year. Great, great, thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next, I'd like to ask um, Jessica Dixon, who is Vice President and COO of Target Community and Educational Services, to receive. Their check. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say thanks for your Sure. Time? I mean, just just like Act of Carol, we're very grateful and appreciative of of these um um money that you've raised for us. <laughs> um, our team always looks forward to the Celtic Cantor volunteering every year, rain or wind or <laughs> sun, um, and uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, we support adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities um, residentially in our meaningful day programs, learning vocational skills, and out in the community. So every bit of this counts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and last, but certainly not least, the sponsor of the 0.5K, um, campus administrator Beth Fruit from Crossroads Community Church. There you go. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah. and we're just so happy to um, team up with um, the city. We just love working with um, Abby and her team. And but we're so much more than a church. Like we're really involved in the community. We have um, a community center right in town, and we deal with like over by Sullivan Avenue. We have a food distribution that we do every week, and we have a kids club, kind of like the boys and girls club on a smaller scale for that neighborhood. Um, as well as we have a residential um, uh, recovery program right on Main Street. Um, so we try to, we just want to, anything that we get from the city, from raising money, we want to put back into the city. So that's our goal here. So thank you so much. For thank, you. thank you. So um, I just want to say, um, well, first of all, thank you for your kind words, but also know that we are all um, appreciative of your gift of volunteer service, right? Not only during this event, but also throughout the year that you provide for the community and I, we hope that this donation or these donations can be used um, in a good way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Mr. Gallagher. Dr. Gallagher, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate the Celtic Cancer. It's like the first kickoff of yeah. our of our events in March. So that means summer is right around the corner yeah. when that happens. Doesn't feel that way that day sometimes. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you very much. You don't have to. 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 You have to. You don't 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 have to. And then we have um, the minutes from the biennial organizational meeting of the new council on May 15th. We have a motion to approve both. That's a good motion to approve. And motion by Mr. Dayhoff. Is there a second? Second. The second by Mr. Hoff. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Yeah, I see we have the house have it. And those are approved. We have four items on the consent calendar. We have a motion to approve the consent. Motion to approve. The motion by Mr. Dayhoff. Is there a second? Second. The second by Mr. Kavachi. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
as opposed to saying nay, hey, yes, he never wants to have it. Say Calvary is approved. Report for the mayor, Dr. Becker. Uh, thank you. Here we go. Um, so uh, it seems like we've been meeting a lot for the last several weeks, but um, I'll, I'll fill in my report short meetings. meetings. Short meetings. Um, we'll try to keep the meeting short. Um, I just want to thank uh, Ms. Gruber and her staff and all the hard work at the uh, Flower and Jazz on uh, May 13th. Um, I know it was a little rainy. It wasn't the best conditions. It was better than... 2022, when it was raining <laughs> sideways, it was much better than the wine stroll uh, earlier in the year. So um, hopefully as we go throughout the year, this means the weather is going to get a little bit better for each time. So hopefully the sun uh, in June. But um, that it was a great event, and uh, it always is uh, the flower and jazz uh, event. So it's one of my first events I remember going to for the evening's lessons. Um, the farmer's market opened officially on May 20th, uh, and so they are open through November 18th, which is the first, uh, sorry, which is the Saturday right before Thanksgiving. Uh, so um, I know I was there. I ran into um, Council Member Gilbert was there. I know you were there um, a little bit later, but um, I am a big supporter of the farmer's market, and I know the council is as well. Um, and so every Saturday uh, from now through November, uh, open at 8 a.m. until noon. Um, on Also on Saturday, May 20th, I um, attended a softball game between uh, law enforcement in Carroll County and Westminster. Um, between, sorry, Carroll County and uh, Westminster Law Enforcement and um, uh, Re Triangle Recovery Club. Uh, and together with Chief Ledwell, Sheriff DeWeese, and State's Attorney Shoemaker, um, we threw out the first pitches um, all at once, somewhat coordinated, not quite synchronous. Um, but this is a really great annual tradition that follows this uh, say note to dope walk uh, that is organized within the city. And what I really think this does is it brings together individuals uh, who are recovering and local law enforcement. And it really highlights, I think, the connections um, that the organizations have uh, at that. There were booths set up by um, Carroll Health Department and some other um, nonprofits as well. Um, and Chief informed me that Triangle Recovery Club did win the game. They often do. Not, not very close. <laughs> they, um, we played in the city park, and the softball field in city park is very close to the rec center, and there were balls hit that landed in the tennis courts. So that is wow. that is quite a distance, right? Uh, for that, um, but that was a really fun. That was a really fun day as well. Um, the last thing I just want to say is um, summer's right around the corner, and one of the things that I think is so wonderful to see is so many residents enjoying the city amenities. Uh, I live next to a park, and I know that while some residents might not be thrilled with the idea of living next to a park, there might be a little bit increased noise. Uh, there might be a little bit increased traffic. I actually really enjoy the summer in the parks because you've got kids playing basketball, you have people playing pickleball, um, you hear children laughing on the playground, and that's all part of the neighborhood, right? And especially the neighborhood I live in. Um, we have a lot of young families, and so there's always kids. And to me, it sort of represents that Westminster is, it's a safe place. Uh, and people are out enjoying all these amenities. When I was on my way to the council meeting this evening, I drove by the city park. I think, I mean, you know, Ms. Gruber's nodding her head. Uh, the tennis courts were full. The pickleball courts were full. Um, there were two teams practicing softball. There was a team at the basketball court. The playground was full. Um, and I think that that just sort of shows what summer is like uh, within the city of Westminster. So I'm very appreciative of that. And adding to that this week will be the poll. So I'll let uh, Ms. Cooper talk about that later, I'm sure. But that is all I have. All right, very good. Thank you, Mayor. We'll move on now to reports from standing committees. Um, again, as we always do, with our liaison to the Carroll County Arts Council, Mr. Dayhoff. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm happy to report that the mural project is moving along. Um, it looks like we've made the next round and uh, receiving grants, uh, relatively large grants, as a matter of fact, for the mural project. So we're really looking forward to that. 
uh, lots of really good programming at the Arts Council. Um, and we're looking forward to moving forward with the strategic plan. That's my report. Thank you. Second question. Okay. Um, where is the proposed mural going to be at? I think we're still going to do one at the Diffin Dole Lot. I mean, we are, we'll all have an opportunity to participate in those decisions. But we, we first started discussing a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, the wall with the Diffin right. Dole Lot. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're really excited about that. And we also um, really like doing it with uh, Kibachi money, <laughs> other people's money. Yeah, but the, the 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 Maryland State Arts Council has a good bit of funding available for arts and cultural initiatives and things, and we're more than happy to uh, participate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sure. Uh, Economic and Community Development Committee, Mr. Hoff. Uh, Mr. President, I'll just note we had a meeting on May the 18th. We discussed a small housing project that might eventually be coming our way. We also discussed um, uh, the state cannabis reform and how that might uh, necessitate a, uh, some changes to our code. Uh, those are the only two items we discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the finance committee, um, uh, I'll just mention that uh, later on the agenda, we have a budget amendment. Uh, we'll be discussing. Uh, it is, uh, we'll say more about them, but it's helping to wrap up you know, the uh, fiscal year, some things that uh, we already discussed in other places and need to you know, go ahead and uh, take action. Um, uh, personnel committee, I will also report on that. Now that new committee doesn't remember who is responsible for the report. Um, so, personnel committee is now mine, and I'll always have to report on that uh, front tonight. Uh, public safety, Mr. Kalachi. Hey, Mr. President, thank you. Um, first off, uh, Sergeant Timmy Galaspadale was uh, awarded the police officer of the quarter, pardon me, for uh, Q1. Um, Sergeant Galaspadale did a lot of uh, really positive things recently related to recruiting and some other administrative uh, duties within the department, some, some First Amendment procedure training for civilians and some other things that are not necessarily uh, going to make great TV shows or movies, but they're things that are really necessary to keep the police departments running, particularly right now with the challenges that we have with recruiting. And uh, he did a, a great job. We, uh, through the chief's leadership, <clears throat> the department tried some creative uh, things in terms of, of, of how we went about some of the process in recruiting. And, it seems like it bore a little bit of fruit, but it also, I, I think, was innovative and, and in the future can continue to be helpful. And Sergeant Velasquez played a significant role in that um, and did it with a smile. Uh, any of you guys that know Sergeant Velasquez know that he's a very personable guy and we're very fortunate to have him. So um, I was glad to see him get that uh, police uh, that police officer of the quarter designation. Um, Chief Ledwell on the 11th of May. Uh, participated in the annual drug overdose Pre prevention vigil, which is sponsored by the state's attorney's office. It was held at St. John's Catholic Church at the Portico. Um, on the 15th, several members of the Westminster Police Department <clears throat> received awards at the annual Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Day award ceremony. This event was held at the Pleasant Valley Fire Hall this year. And the awards recipients, I'm going to read them off. It's not too long of a list, but I think they should be recognized. Uh, Detective uh, Marie Kent was the 2022 Law Enforcement Officer of the Year. That's a, that's a big deal. Um, so congratulations to her. Lieutenant Timmy Reif was the 2020 Law Enforcement Supervisor of the Year. I'm sorry, 2022. Law Enforcement Supervisor of the Year. And PFC Victoria Ash was the 2022 Community Engagement Award. Uh, winner, Detective Sergeant Richard Lambert. Sorry, uh, Sergeant Lambert uh, was the Law Enforcement Distinguished Achievement. He won the Law Enforcement Distinguished Achievement Award, and Corporal William Long uh, won the Law Enforcement Distinguished Achievement Award as well. Um, so that's you know quite quite a few honors for um, you know our size department. So they yeah, should all be very proud of themselves, especially. Uh, Detective Kent, winning uh, law enforcement officer of the year. That's uh, quite an accomplishment. And as the chief mentioned, um, <clears throat> the uh, 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 department played in the softball game at City Park uh, relative to say no to no to dope walk. So I don't need to repeat any information about that. That 
is all I have. Oh, one last thing. <clears throat> um, I, I assume most of you were maybe a little aware. I know those of you on council were, but I'm more, more speaking to folks that might be watching. Um, there was an incident that occurred at the hospital about two weeks ago um, where a person in, in crisis, mental health crisis, uh, went into the hospital with a weapon. Um, and one of our police officers was the first responding officer. Um, we're not, and that's outside of the city, but it's so close that we got there faster than, than, than the, the sheriff's or state police were able to get there. And uh, he, he got there and just did an un, unbelievably good job, um, along with some, some sheriff deputies that also arrived shortly thereafter. And I think without going into a bunch of detail, bottom line is no one got hurt. There was no incident, nothing bad happened, and it could have been a situation where we were on national media, um, had it gone the wrong way. And I think that speaks volumes to the training that the chief uh, does with our police officers in terms of how to handle a situation like that. It's just one more reason why I think we're so fortunate to have him and some of the senior leaders within the department and then just wonderful people that are our police officers. They didn't go in, cowboy it all up. They handled the situation right and walked out of there with everybody safe and sound. And I, I just wanted to note how incredibly grateful I am. And I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody sitting up here, Chief, um, saying thank you for, for just training the troops to do that kind of job. Please pass along our appreciation for turning a what could have been a disastrous situation into one that I don't think you even got one drop of ink in the newspaper. Um, so that's a wonderful thing. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. President. Sorry for a long presentation. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Kalachi. Good news all around. Um, Public Works Committee, Ms. Gilbert, who is uh, not with us this evening and uh, unable to give a report, um, but only she wanted to share a brief time. So, all right. Uh, Recreational Parks, um, uh, she is also not with us for that, but uh, I know that the Recreational Parks is a bit of a meeting. Mr. Kalachi, anything you want to share from that? Or? Uh, no, I, I, I will we'll let her go. Let her go into this back. I, I didn't come prepared, so that's uh, fine. Very good. Say anything. All well, there's nothing impressive to me. That's okay. Yeah. And technology committee, Mr. Day. Progress. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you. Very good. All right. Now it's time for council comments and discussion. It's the opportunity for council members to share uh, their thoughts or concerns about anything um, that we wish that is not on the agenda. Begin uh, with this project. And very briefly, Mr. President, I just wanted to compliment Ms. Impulse, and I believe it's mostly public works. I think they're the ones who maintain Main Street with the flowers and the music and all the things, you know, the flags. It just looks really great. You know, I was down there for a meeting and you know, walked into one of the local businesses to pick something up and had to walk back to my car. I'm looking around like, it's really nice. It's, it's, you guys have done a wonderful job. And it really looks wonderful for the spring. I hear people commenting about it and, and a lot of positive feedback. I know we've talked about this at night, but I don't think there's anything wrong with continuing to talk about how great it is. So I just wanted to bring that comment out. Thanks, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kalachi. Mr. Day. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, on behalf of Mr. Kabachi, who served on the Middle School Committee, um, I was just made aware recently that we're going to have an open house for the community for the old East Middle School on Thursday, June the 1st, uh, from 5 o'clock in the evening till 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, there's, going to, there's not going to be any formal tours of the building, but it will be an opportunity for those of us who attended the old Westminster High School to perhaps say farewell to the building. I think it was announced recently that the demolition permit has signed and will be moving forward. I uh, want to announce Memorial Day. Memorial Day will be coming up on May 29th. We're very, very pleased to announce that Brigadier General um, Janine Burkhead will be the speaker this year. She is the current Adjutant General of the Maryland National Guard. Um, I was on the phone a good bit today with the Maryland military today, and we're really honored to have her speak. Um, she will be made uh, she will be promoted to a major general on June 3rd, and I have been invited to the promotion ceremony, and I'm looking forward to that. And while I was on the phone with the Maryland military today, um, we talked a little bit about the excitement of the Pida visit coming up on July the 1st through the 9th, and I think there are going to be 
talking with you about that sometime soon. I believe it's getting there. You did. That's what I thought was good. Well, well um, it's time, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had the honor to attend and speak at the funeral of former Westminster Superintendent Tom Owens. Tom Owens was uh, a longstanding um, uh, employee with the city of Westminster, did great work. I enjoyed working with him. We, Mr. Owens and I had many adventures and it was an honor to, to speak with him. And I also had the opportunity to speak with uh, Vietnam veteran uh, Walter Brooms at the Boys and Girls Club recently. He has uh, an honor banner in front of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and um, it was, it was uh, exciting to bring to light to the children uh, the person that was on the banner. Um, Councilwoman um, Gilbert and I attended the uh, Carroll County Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Awards. It was a great event. And Westminster was very much highlighted um, in that event. Let me go through here. Oh, um, Chief Ledwell and Sheriff Deweese and uh, uh, the, com the Barrett Commander Bosley and I were the folks that stood up front for the uh, state's attorney's eighth annual drug overdose and prevention vigil. Uh, it was a very moving ceremony. Um, I recognized quite a few of the names that were announced that evening. I was on those incidents. Um, and I also had an opportunity to speak um, on behalf of the mayor and the common council at the recent Muslim inter-community dinner. It was a very good event. It was very well attended. Uh, folks like um, uh, Judge Rosinski, uh, Chief Ledwell was there. Um, it was a very nice event for all of us to get together. And finally, I had the opportunity to give a report to the women's club. The women's club had their district meeting on Saturday, and um, I was honored to have been asked by um, my lifelong friend, Babs Condon, to come and give a, a brief report on the city of Westminster. And I believe that will be it, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Hahn. I have no comments today. Mr. President. All right. Very good. I just have a couple things. I, as the man mentioned, I didn't get a chance to go to the farmer's market. And it was, you know, once again, you know, it was great to see everybody out and uh, you know, see your old friends um, you know, there as well. And looking forward to the produce rolling in as, uh, as the season wears on. We think chickens were a little slim early in the year, but, but that'll build up and excited about that. that. Um, looking forward to the Memorial Day upgrade. I see my, my old colleague, uh, General Burkhead. You know, she and I worked together in the U.S. Senate. Some years ago, and she's a terrific person, very excited. She was the uh, person who led uh, the deployment of the Maryland National Guard um, post January 6th uh, to protect the Capitol. You know, so uh, you know, she's she's really an amazing person. And, uh, I'm very excited that you know, the governor's put her in this position. Looking forward to welcoming, welcoming her to Westminster. Um, and also, as Mr. Dayhoff mentioned, and the mayor and I have been working you know, with. Uh, with the city administrator and uh, Tom Baird, our old friend, you know, former city employee, who um, you know has been our contact with the folks you know, in Pida, Estonia. We're looking forward to welcoming them beginning of July. They'll have some council members and senior staff will be part of the group and we'll be sharing some information with everybody you know over the next few days. I know that they're going to come together and make sure people are able to join us for as many of those things as possible. It's been a while since they got to visit us. They had a trip plan. That uh, was unfortunately uh, because of the pandemic. So it's going to be exciting to have them, have them here. Um, Ambassador Pitt, who's planning on joining us, coming up. It'd be nice to see him again. He's, you know, uh, you know, he's always enjoyed his trips to Westminster and looking forward to seeing him again. So I think it'll be a nice nice opportunity for us to you know, get to get to visit with you know, um, some of our counterparts you know, from PIDA and uh, also uh, to um, update. A declaration of understanding with them. I think that we're going to have some new things that we're adding to that uh, about how we can you know, work together you know, or, or fulfill the mission that was originally envisioned under the sister cities arrangement. And I think that's pretty exciting. So we're to be able to do all that. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, move on now to ordinances and resolutions. We have uh, one item here tonight introduction of ordinance. 
2023-04, the fiscal year 23 budget amendment number two. And uh, for an explanation, we will go to our director of finance, Ms. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Picarero. And thank you again, Mr. Hoff, for catching the rounding error so we get those fixed before we do the introduction this evening. The city's fiscal year commenced on July 1st of 2022. In accordance with section 20-2 of the Code of the City of Westminster, the city administrator prepared a budget for the mayor to present to the Common Council for consideration. Ordinance 943, approving a budget for fiscal year 23, was adopted on May 23rd of 2022. In addition, the mayor and Common Council adopted Ordinance 2023-01 to amend the fiscal year 23 budget on February 27th of 2023. During the remainder of this current year, the city will incur additional expenses that exceed the current appropriation and therefore additional appropriations are necessary. A summary of the proposed additions is included and the funding sources are as follows. $76,414.48 ARPA funds will be used. 25,000 will come from new intergovernmental funds or grants. $18,207.35 will come from other sources. Specifically, these are donated funds for our Westminster Police Department canine unit. $220,241.06 will come from general fund reserves. $1,312,396.90 will come from sewer fund reserves. And $77,940 will come from water fund reserves for a total additional appropriation of $1,730,199.79. Staff recommends that the mayor and common council introduce the amended budget appropriations as detailed in ordinance number 2023-04. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. And um, because everybody is aware, uh, it has become our practice since we had our city administrator join us to introduce these budget amendments, I think it's a much better way of handling you know, various uh, changes in the budget during the course of the year. You know, I think it's a sensible way to move forward. I mean, these are all things we've discussed in previous meetings. We also have a to approve a okay, motion, sorry, to introduce Order 23 dash Dr. President, I'll make a motion to introduce. All right, thank you, Mr. Hoff. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Day Hobson. Um, so this is for an introduction as I said. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Rogers or Ms. Impulse? Have any comments? If not, we'll go on. We will plan on uh, taking this up again for adoption in our next day of meeting. Um, all those in favor of um, introductions, please say aye. Aye. Those the folks say nay. Yeah, you can have any nice have it. And uh, the ordinance was introduced. Thank you. All right, we have one bid tonight, award of a contract for the Main Street water main replacement. And for that, we'll turn to Mr. Banks. Thank you, Mr. President. The current capital fund CIP includes funding for the replacement of the water main on Main Street, Longwell Avenue to the intersection of Banker Street. The project was advertised on February 10th, 2023 on EMMA, but a pre-bid meeting and bid due dates of February 21st. 2023 and March 17, 2023, respectively. Two bids were received, with the lowest being for ECM. Below is a summary of the two bid lists. ECM appropriation $1,932,735, and Geyer Brothers Inc. $2,953,850.05. The city staff has reviewed and evaluated the references and bids from EF. ECM Corporation in the total amount of $1,933,735 and finds it to be acceptable with regard to the city needs. The FY23 CIP budget for this project, including corporate funding in the amount of $1,250,000, the FY24 budget amendment will be needed in the amount of $682,735 to be funded by ARPA. ARPA. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Common Council accept the bid and award contract to ECM 
appropriation of Southern Maryland in the amount of $1,932,735 for water main replacement work. All right, thank you, Mr. Dick. Let's uh, get this uh, for the council um, for discussion. Uh, may I have a motion uh, to award the contract? I'll move to award, Mr. President. A motion by Mr. Colacci and a second by Mr. Ha. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Dick or staff or any comments? Mr. President, Mr. Day, I wanted it to be noted by uh, the folks that are watching that the uh, EPM Corporation is a woman in business. I think it's really good that we are um, using um, diversity owned businesses for work in the city of Westminster. I was looking in here when when is it that we want to do this work? But that's going to have to be very carefully um, scheduled. We haven't had our pre-construction yeah. meeting to determine those things. Uh, once we have that, we'll have a better start date. Uh, Maybe we can let folks know because that's going to be, be fairly disruptive. disruptive. This is the one where we're going to take the two word names and, and combine it into one word name. That's yes, going to be really good. Mr. Hawk. Um, I'll just note, um, I mean, it, it's nice uh, who the ownership is, but I will note it is the lowest bid because for my standpoint, that's what I most care about is what is the lowest bid. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is that uh, I'm really glad to see that we're being proactive in doing um, in, in updating our infrastructure uh, that, you know, because we're, we're doing a lot of things that people can see, like the clock tower and Waveville Valley. Um, and, and this kind of stuff people don't really think about until we have some kind of catastrophic failure. Uh, but I think it's great that we are investing uh, in the future of the city um, when it comes to things like water and sewer. Um, so I will just note that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, we're certainly going to see this one. As it's going in, yes. <laughs> Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, move on to a vote. All those in favor of awarding the contract uh, for the Main Street Water Main Replacement, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The yeah, I seem to have a nice habit, and the contract is awarded. And we will look forward to staff keeping us updated uh, once they do have the reconstruction meeting. We will see the schedule, and we're certainly going to have to publicize that. That's the word. All right. I'm feeling a lot of traffic will pass my house. Unfinished business. There's no unfinished business, of which I'm aware. Does anybody have any unfinished business? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. We have one item of new business, Mr. Karachi. Mr. President, I'd like to move that the Common Council adjourn into a closed meeting at the conclusion of the Mayor of Common Council meeting of Monday, May 22nd, 2023, today, in accordance with the general provisions of the annotated code of Maryland 3 305 B, subsection 1, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials that work in this public body as jurisdiction and the other personnel matters that affect one or more specific individuals in section B, subsection seven, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. All right, thank you, Mr. Kavachi. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Kavachi and a second by Mr. Hoff uh, for the council to adjourn into a closed meeting at the meeting of the regular meeting. Is there any? Uh, that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those that both say nay, yeah, I seem to have the eyes of it, and we will do so to conclude the meeting. Uh, time now for the department reports. Ms. Impulse. Thank you, Mr. President. Council Member Deha, do you have a report from the fire department? No, we need to catch up. Um, we just weren't enough hours in the day today. All right, so I want to start by thanking um, a few departments for successfully hosting the city election. Um, and that starts with, of course, the city clerk. Um, this was the city clerk's first election with the city of Westminster. My first election with the city of Westminster. And Mr. Barber certainly put on um, an election that was fairly flawless. But we can't do that without the city clerk. So I want to also thank, of course, the public works department, 
who helped get everything set up and who were out there greeting the public and make sure people understood where to go in. And of course, the police department who helped to set up the perimeter um, for the candidates. Um, it's a team effort around here. This is just one more example, but I want to thank the team um, for the efforts there. So we'll start off tonight with the Public Works Department, Mr. Dick. Thank you, Ms. Imholz. Uh, we'll start with the clock tower. It's going on really smooth. Uh, it's on, still on schedule. There's been no hiccups. Uh, there's been a few minor things that they brought to my attention that will be coming through as a change order. I have yet to receive that. I expect it tomorrow. Um, it was things that we could not tell until taking the clock face off, finding out all the wood was rot rotted. And they want to replace that with a uh, ionized aluminum black instead of wood. Um, things that I would just did, and once again, when you started ripping things apart, is when you find these things. So uh, once I get more clarity on what all is involved there, I'll be sure to get that passed forward. Uh, the trail pave, paving for Wakefield between Union Town and Windsor going really smooth. We had a small hiccup of uh, once they start ripping it up, they need to undercut it, get the cutting done. Uh, to step in the ground, I was actually out there and it was amazing watching the small structs go across the inch. Everything just sank. So, you had to dig all that out, get it down to solid ground. Uh, coming along really good. They paid from Union Town to about halfway where the walking trail comes down from Hobbit's Lane. Um, they've finished up paving up today, so it's already paved, and paved up to that point. They're working on the access trail up to Hobbits uh, today and getting that stoned and then working on doing some undercutting between uh, that access and uh, Windsor. So this week looks like it's good weather and they're really pushing to try to have, try to have it completely completed this week. So uh, that would be a good thing, but it is going well. Sidewalk uh, project there on Green Street, the bridge is complete. Uh, that seemed pretty good for this company and looks really good. Um, they are also the ones doing our ADA ramps. So they have a little bit more money to exhaust in that fund. So they will be going out to complete a couple more um, ADA ramps for that. Uh, we had a lot of people in our departments getting CPR and confined space certified uh, last week. Spent some time in classes. We did a bunch of storm inlets on Richmar. And the other night, if anybody happened to be out roaming the streets at all hours, <laughs> our street department was out taking care of uh, crosswalks between Church Street and East Main. From, uh, yeah, I think it was from Center Street out. There were all the new ones were replaced. And that's all I have. Are there any questions for the Public Works Department? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Recreation Department, Ms. Gruber. Good evening. We are working on onboarding our summer staff. So this is camp counselors, camp directors, camp assistant directors, lifeguards, school managers, and school assistant managers. Um, we do multiple trainings with these folks to get them ready for their summer employment with the city of Westminster. I am happy to report that we have filled all of our summer employment opportunities. So now it's just a matter of, as I said, onboarding and training them for their um, summer jobs. And in conjunction with that, we are working hard on putting the finishing touches on the pool. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, and I just can't wait to um, share that lovely facility with our community. So it, it's, it's been a remarkable transformation. And um, things are on time and um, moving along. So we are hoping for great weather this weekend so that um, we can share that with everyone. And lastly, we are also working on our Pickle in the Park tournament, which is, so we have our pool opening this weekend and then the following weekend, the first weekend in June is Pickle in the Park, which we will be hosting in City Park. Um, so, just making progress on, on all of those things, and the beer barbecue stroll is around the corner as well on June 17th, so. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Gerber. Are there any questions for the Recreation Department? Hearing none, we will move on to the Housing Department. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. 
I wanted to report that we, I think two weeks ago, we sent out the first reminders to a landlord mm -hmm. that they need to renew. The second week of June, there will be a second reminder to everybody that they need to renew their licenses by June 30th. Uh, July 31st, if they haven't renewed, then they start incurring fees each month that the license is not renewed. So we try to make sure we are proactive that everybody get enough notice that we'll they have multiple opportunities in terms of being reminded. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. Yes, pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, when we send out the notices, do we send them you know, to under US mail or do we do emails or do we have a combination of that? Or how do we how do we do that? It will be a combination of email and regular mail. Okay. Uh, the, the next way is going to be an email as well as sending it through the US Postal Service. Right. Okay. You, said, you said the first one sent out to you. Yeah, we did the general reminder about two weeks ago. Was that mail? It was email to the email that we have on file. And if somebody didn't get one, uh, there, I know that there may have been an instance in which some people did not get them. And uh, if the email address has changed and people didn't let us know, you know, sometimes we get a bounce back and then we'll try to track down the owner. Stamp filters have gotten very aggressive. So, oh, I was just going to comment on the ground. I did get my notices. Uh, greatly appreciated. I forwarded them on to the person that in my office to take care of that stuff. Uh, but it is such a pleasure uh, that we actually received that. And I've noticed during your tenure that I'm receiving those notices on a timely basis. Because uh, prior to my time on council, that was not always the case. So it's greatly appreciated that you know we get the a notice well ahead of time, and then you follow up again. Um, so it makes it pretty hard pressed for somebody to miss it. Mr. President, one, one more question: sure. what, What's the what's the date for renewal? What when did it, when does it be renewed? By July first. July first. You have until July thirty first to renew without penalty. So if they expire on June 30th, there's a 30-day grace period. Uh, and then starting August the 1st, then you start incurring uh, a penalty for each month. So they're due on July 1st. Mr. Brown is very courteous and gives an additional 30 days. <laughs> Great. Are there any other questions for the housing department? Hearing none, we'll move on to the IT department, Mr. Moore. Well, so I do not have anything to report tonight. Any questions for this department? Hearing none, we'll move on to the planning department. Mr. Thank you so much. And good evening. Um, on May 18th, the Planning and Zoning Commission held its public hearing in Ellsworth Cemetery annexation and forwarded a favorable recommendation to the Mayor and County Council. The Mayor and County Council is scheduled to hold a public hearing on the annexation on June 12, 2023. On June 6th, the Board of Zoning Appeals is scheduled to hear a special exception application for a automobile car wash at 900 uh, Bulk to Bulk Boulevard. That's the nice solar site. They're adding a car wash to the, they're requesting to add a car wash to the, um, to the dealership. Also, a special exception um, for a microbrewery and pub brewery licensed under Article 2B of the Annotated Code. At 41 East Main Street, this is where the dog is requesting a brewery to open at that location. Um, and just as an interesting note, the Maryland Big Tree Program has listed two new trees, a pin oak with county champion status and a Norway maple with county and state champion status located in the city of Westminster's Wakefield Valley Park. Big tree numbers 42, 41, and 42, 42. That you can look these up on the Big Tree Program website. That completes our report. Are there questions for this department? Uh, Ms. Simples. Um, do they already have a car wash? At they do not. Oh, okay. There's no structure built yet. They would have to get the special exception first. Then they would have to uh, amend the site plan to add the car wash. It used to have their own site. Yes. Yeah. Their own site. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Simmons. 
Ms. Kim Holmes, I just wanted to comment for the benefit of council as being the ex officio member of uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. You know, uh, time flies on me, but I think sometime within the past six months, we appointed Tom Baird um, onto the Planning and Zoning Commission. But I just wanted to note, and I think staff would agree that it's been a great addition. Uh, he consistently shows up to the meeting and really has, uh, um, you know, beneficial stuff to, to stay at the meeting. So uh, I just wanted to share that for the the city of the council. Uh, sometimes you don't always hear get feedback, but he's got a great addition. Mark's job for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's been very good and it's worked out well. All right, hearing nothing else, we'll move on to the human resources part of Ms. McCullough. Thank you, Ms. Inhofe. Uh, good evening. Uh, just a reminder that the open enrollment period for employee benefits uh, for insurance. Uh, the close will be uh, this Friday, May 26th. Uh, if you have any changes, um, need to uh, add um, family members, uh, the deadline is, is Friday. Um, also, um, HR continues to recruit for a few positions. Um, we are filling positions, getting applicants. Uh, so we encourage uh, folks to go to the city's website and apply for um, our vacancies. Thank you, that completes my report. So just a reminder, if you have city health insurance, you have to fill out a form by Friday, even if you're not changing anything, you still need to fill the form out. That's correct, right? Correct, yes. I almost got caught in that loop last year, so I'm just pretty sure no one else has. <laughs> Uh, are there any questions for the human resources department? Hearing none, we'll move on to the finance department. Ms. Rogers? Thank you, Ms. Impulse. I do not have a report to see. <laughs> Very good. Any questions for the finance department? We will round us out with the police department. Chief Level? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Almost a year ago, um, our patrol uh, bureau started an investigation, and then our detective took over investigation for um, some shots fired on Jenny Drive. Um, it culminated in a proactive traffic stop where we reco recovered some firearms and then um, subsequent interviews, um, video surveillance review, and then finally uh, forensic evidence that took the longest. And on May 18th, 17-year-old um, Noah Whitehead was indicted as an adult on 11 criminal charges for this act. So, um, he had his initial appearance in circuit court today and is being held on a no bond status if we feel kind of actually it's only, it was a good investigation by uh, both patrol and the detectives. That's all I have. Are there any questions for the police department? Mr. President, that concludes the departmental reports. All right. Thank you, Ms. Um Next item on the agenda is citizen comments. And finally, item on the agenda this is when we invite the public to address the mayor and council on any issues that pertain to tonight's agenda or any other city issues. Um, for citizens not attending the public meeting, we invite you to send us your comments or concerns via email at comments at westminstermd.gov. All comments received by email will be shared with the mayor and council. Commenters should include their address and phone number with their comments. Uh, doesn't seem to be anybody here present uh, Berkeley, um, to make any comments here, so we will skip that part. And um, I guess that's uh, that'll be it for tonight. That concludes our agenda and the meeting. Um, right. That concludes our agenda and the meeting. And uh, we all two weeks. Right.